Hey there, friends. Uh, welcome to the Questions Podcast. And today uh, I want to deal with the subject called uh, church names or about church names. What's in a name? And you're going to say, how in the world is this a uh, question that is facing the church today? Well, I hope that you'll stay with me and you won't say, okay, boomer, <laughs> to me as I try to explain what I mean by there's a question here that we have to deal with. So let's just um, consider for a moment, let's say we're on a trip together. And we travel in a vehicle to a part of the country we've never been there before. And we're staying with some friends and the car breaks down and we need to park for the car. So we jump in our friend's vehicle and we go to get a park. And as we're traveling through this town, the only thing we see are uh, places called stores. No, nobody has a name. It's Joe's store, Fred's store, Tina's store, Martine's store, you know, Fredna's store, but there's not any name associated with any of these. I mean, like product type of names. So it's not Fred's part store, it's not Tina's dress shop, you know, it's just store. And so we don't know, we don't know which one to go to. And so we just randomly pick one. Uh, we pick Fred's store because, you know, Fred's a guy and maybe Fred sells auto parts. We don't know. And we go walk into Fred's store and it's a ladies dress shop. So we leave Fred's store and we go over to Tina's store. And we walk into Tina's store and it's kitchenwares. And we spend a lot of time that day going from store to store, not knowing where we're headed because they all say store. We want an auto part, but what we find is that every place is so nondescript that we can't find what we need. And that's the problem in the church today because instead of labeling our churches by doctrine and by doctrinal heritage, we're naming them things like the bridge, crossway, the everlasting life, uh, elevate, that's a good one, higher ground, mountain top, you know, and after the funny name or the interesting name, we call it church, mountain top church, elevate church, new life church, but it doesn't tell you anything about what's taught inside. So if you're going to church and you want to you're in a new town and you've just moved there and you want to belong to a local congregation and you're going from place to place and all of them say church but none of them tell you this is Methodist, this is Baptist, this is Christian, this is Disciples of Christ, this is Catholic, they all just say something church. The, the names are meaningless and all you get is the word church and so you have to go to each one and then try to discern from each one what exactly is it that they teach. And I say this is a problem today, and it's one reason why I'm making this, this podcast. It's a problem because what we have done is that we have substituted uh, for doctrine Christian experience or evangelism. And so we've stripped out all the doctrinal uh, identifiers the nomenclature that identified us doctrinally and we've replaced it with sometimes nonsense words that tell us absolutely nothing about what's inside. You would never eat a candy bar, would you, if you didn't know what was under that wrapper. If it was just a white wrapper and it said candy bar, candy bar on the top, you might not open it up because you don't know what you're going to get. Kind of like with those little candies that you get it. Is it at Christmas time, those little chocolates that you get, you never know what's in each one, so you have to kind of investigate, you know? What ha what's happened, as I said, is we've substituted for doctrine evangelism. This is the same thing that happened in the downgrade controversy in the 19th century in London, England, amongst the Baptists and the Congregationalists. They dispensed with doctrine, saying that doctrine was you know, passe, and it, it really didn't matter that much, it was second hand, and they went for Christian experience. 
David Kingdon wrote a very good article in this book, which, let me put it up here next to the camera, A Marvelous Ministry, and he wrote uh, an article in here about the downgrade controversy. And during the downgrade controversy, what we discover is that the, the churches had taken out the idea of doctrine as important and as something that sort of, you know, identified, separated, and, and classified the churches, and just they just got rid of it. Uh, the Christian life, he says, was increasingly separated from Christian doctrine, it being assumed that doctrine did not really shape experience, but rather that doctrine was the formulation of data provided by Christian experience. Thus, experience tended to be made the norm, while doctrines, however greatly they conflicted, were viewed as insight based on experience. The emphasis was shifting from what God had revealed to what man could formulate. And that's exactly what's happening today. We have, we are tending in our churches to sideline doctrine. And that's being reflected in these names. Because we don't want people to know that it's a Baptist church. And if it's not in the name, if we're not advertising that up front, then really can't, can't we just sort of fudge on what we teach? Does it really have to be uh, about baptism or about the Word of God as revealed in the Scripture? And I think that's another reason why so many charismatic and Word of Faith places are growing is because they're teaching that there is a revelation that's ongoing. The revelation isn't finished and closed in the Scripture. The revelation is actually still being taught or still being delivered by the Holy Ghost today. And of course, that's, that's not true. It's not. The revelation is finished. It's closed. And so we're naming our churches all kinds of funny names simply because we want people to come. We don't want the name to hinder them from coming. Well, the name doesn't hinder anyone from coming especially if it's in a community, a small community, they're going to, if, the, if there's a church there, uh, if it's Protestant or if it's Catholic or whatever it is, people are going to select the church according to what's being taught, especially Christian folk. Folks that are not Christian shouldn't be the ones driving uh, the doctrine that's being taught in the church. We should be teaching them, yes, this is important. It's important to say we're Baptist. It's important to say that we're whatever we are. So the people know because it is the doctrine that shapes us, that creates us, that makes our community. We, we commune around the doctrine. It's not the other way around. It's not that we commune around one another and then the doctrine is secondary. No, the doctrine is the thing. It's the framework in which we covenant together and the framework in which we fellowship together. And see, when you put doctrine to the side and we say, well, it doesn't matter what we teach. It doesn't matter what we believe then what do you have? You have a hodgepodge of all different sorts of opinions, not based on anything at all except someone's opinion. And so someone might be very charismatic, somebody might be New Age spiritualist, somebody might be Unitarian in their beliefs, somebody might be whatever, they might be Baptist. You, know, you might have one, but they all come together and they call themselves, you know, Blue Sky Church and what is Blue Sky Church? No one really knows. It's just a group of spiritually minded people that have gathered together for not really sure. You know, so that's why I say this is an important issue for the church today. Because we've got so many of these now that seems to be so chic and so trendy, at least amongst certain Protestant groups. Other Protestant groups are not embracing this like some are. And I'm afraid amongst my brethren, the Baptist church, this has become the thing. Let's got to get rid of the name Baptist. And let's, get, let's not talk about doctrine. Let's just go for the people and, and see how many we can reach with the gospel. And that's a great impulse, but it has to come from the doctrine. It cannot just come without the doctrine because then what are you inviting them to believe? What are you inviting them to receive? You might say, you might argue with me and say, well, we're, we're inviting them to receive Jesus. Okay, that's fine. I get that. But according to what? I mean, are you, are you teaching them about believer's baptism? 
that it's an ordinance, not a sacrament? Are you teaching them about the Lord's Supper, that it's an ordinance, not a sacrament? What are you teaching about that? Well, you, you know, if you just put that on the side burner and say, well, we'll figure that out later. No, you won't. You never will. You have to approach that from the very beginning. Everyone needs to know what it is that you believe. So, <clears throat> I hope there will be a reversal of this trend. I hope that we're not in another downgrade controversy uh, or another downgrade theologically. I hope that's not happening to us. But I'm afraid that if you look at the church names today and how they're, how they're done and what's being taught, that instead of having a group of people that is unified by one doctrine, one theological identity, what we have is a hodgepodge. And not, it's affecting our associations and our conventions, within Southern Baptist life at least, I think. Because if you go from one church to the next, within just say a local association there's no fellowship around doctrine only fellowship that we have is because we're within geographic arms reach of one another we you know in, in my case I'm in southwest Ohio so we're situated near Cincinnati and the association of churches fellowships together because we're in Cincinnati is that enough of a reason is that enough of a reason? It used to be that we were fellowshipping because together because we believed one unifying theological theme. Is that still the case? I'm afraid it's not, actually. I'm afraid that many churches are doing their own thing, their own way, and then when we say, hey, let's get together and fellowship, they kind of look around and think, well, what do we have to fellowship over except that we're near to one another. So we need to recapture this idea of theological identity and make it the theme or the point of what it is we do in church. Okay, well that'll be it for today. Let me just advertise the book one more time. I hope that you'll pick this up. This is a great one, Pastor, if you have a chance. Find this, read this, A Marvelous Ministry, The All-Around Ministry of Charles Spurgeon. It's a good book. It's a good read. And read about the downgrade controversy and just you'll see what you think there as you read it. Well, God bless you guys. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching the Questions Podcast. If you made it this far, I love you. I appreciate you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.